Dr. S. P. Asa from Mechanical and Industrial Department, IIT Roorkee. I am going to deliver my lecture 13 of the topic of the strength of materials, uh, which this course is developed under the National Program on Technological Enhanced Learning. As we discussed in the previous lectures that you see what the stress and strain components are there and how they are behaving, you see if uh, you know like uh, if we if they are combinedly applicable or if even uh, singly we can say that the normal stress components are there or no, no, the shear stress components are there and you see when they are applying uh, combinedly then what exactly the impact is there how we can locate the maximum and minimum stresses with the analytical method and the uh, this uh, graphical solutions uh, all together and what are the components if uh, if you apply the load and you see there are two reasons which we discussed per perfectly like if you have you know like the elastic reason and the plastic reason how we can clearly shows the reason and within these reasons even you see there are some of the limits are there like uh, in the previous lecture we discussed about uh, that if you have a ductile material then we can clearly you know like uh, show that what exactly the proportional limit is what uh, the elastic limit is and what the yield limit is there and how we can correlate those things with the, within the microstructure part of a material. And if you go to uh, beyond uh, some points then you will find that there is a plastic reason in which there are certain you know like the reasons are there within that part like uh, there is ultimate tensile strength is there which uh, we shows that actually this is the maximum strength which a, with, uh, which a material can provide against the load application. And then you see before fracture and then there was a fracture part is there and uh, how we can you know like relate all these points with the property of a material that is e that is a very very important point and that's what you see we say we, we told that actually whatever the curve which came you see uh, right from point you see you know like point O to A, A to B, B to C, C to D and D to E all those points which we have shown you know like in the previous uh, diagram it, it was clearly you know like visible visualization is there easy and it is very much applicable for only a ductile material and that material which we have used for that was the mild steel. So, it can be applicable to th those kind of material which is having less carbon percentage or we can say which is a pure steel like mild steel, or high, carbon, high carbon steel, high stainless steel or we can say you know like uh, the material in which uh, though it has some additives are there. but they are always showing less carbon. But if you are showing that actually the low carbon steel means you see if it has a more carbon percentage or if it is you see you know like uh, the cast iron is there or we can say even the concrete is there, we cannot visualize those points like O to A, A to B, B to C, C to D because these are not uh, whatever the layers of the microstructures are there within that as I told you see there are three main uh, categories are there within that like one is the BCC, the body centered or we have SCP or you know like. Uh, FCC is there, the face centered is there. So, if this kind of microstructures are there within those steel components, then it is not, uh, you know, like. Uh uh, pretty easy for uh, the other component if we have SCP part is there which is has you know like the hexagonal close packing kind of those things are there like we have the diamond and other things. Uh, though you see they can show some sort of the ductility is there, but we cannot, e it is not easy to diagnose those things uh, when uh, it is under the application of load is. So, Okay, after applying those things, we found that there were you see if you want to uh, you know like uh, visualize those limits, then always there is a ductile uh, material is there. And if you want to measure the ductility, then the elongation is there. So, how much percentage elongation is there under the application of the tensile loading always gives you the ductility. That if mo and that is what you see, we define the limit for that, that is the 10 percentage to 40 percentage is there. So, we can go you know like up to you know like uh, 25 percent, 30 percent, even up to 40 percent. Certain material they are exhibiting this kind of thing. We can say they are. We can say that these materials are the perfect ductile material altogether. And then you see here, you know, like we we just wanted to categorize those two, you know, like uh, different materials in the previous lectures that we have. If we have a ductile material or if we have a brittle material, then how we can characterize those things? You see, and that's what you see. You know, like we have shown that if uh, 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 this ductile material is there, then how the stress strain curve will come. And if we have a brittle material, then how this stress strain curve will come together. So, okay. So, you see uh, in the ductile material we found that uh, all those elastic and plastic reasons you know like uh, 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 this observed clearly and we can define all those reasons straight away even by that method or the off offsetting method. But if a brittle material is there then it was it was not easy 
to locate those point like the elastic region, plastic region and you see even the yield point or the fracture point and we found that actually that nonlinear relationship that means the plastic region was so small that once you approach to the yield point and then immediately the fracture is there. So even actually it, it was a very small gap between the ultimate uh, the tensile uh, strength and the, uh, the rupture point as far as the, uh, the cast iron or a brittle material concerned under the application of this tensile loading. So, meaning was pretty simple that whatever the layers are there within those you see you know like the materials uh, they are not supporting the tensile test. So, you see if you want to apply those materials like if you want to apply the cast iron for RCC then it is not a good option because you see even if uh, any let us say the earthquake will come and uh, these uh, whatever the cast irons are there under the RCC they cannot sustain the bar they, they cannot sustain you see you know like the load and suddenly the either up to a certain limit they can devote that whole building you see you know like deform that building or else you see the material this uh, building will fail. So, you see always uh, what application is there accordingly we need to go for the specific kind of material and broadly speaking you see since there are two main categories are there. So, even you see wherever we found that actually the tensile loading can come on the object always we preferred to go for mild steel either or high speed steel or high carbon steel and that is what you see you know like all our utensils which are which we are using in our home always uh, because you see when you put on any heater heat application is there and because of the heat application there is a very good chance of the extension. So, we cannot say that okay uh, put the cast iron put all those things because there is a good chance of failure. So, that is what you see either we are usually saying that utensils are from the stainless steel means you see they have you know like the different percentage of the carbon altogether as compared to the brittle material. But you see if you are talking about a base any rigid base about uh, where you see the foundation is there for material uh, the machine or for you see any base uh, of uh, the foundation of any this aeroplane or the railway bus and whatever like that you see. Always we are we, we cannot put uh, these uh, ductile material because you see you know like it is simply extended and if it is extended then you see you know like all the time when it is exten extended under the application of load then it is always uh, tough for us to you know like uh, put the, all the strength and part there. So, because we are putting the compressive strength towards that so cast iron or any kind of ductile material is always good and that is why you see either for if you go for the rails in, in the railway or any kind of these things you found that we have a concrete base kind of that or the wood is there because they are not exhibiting elongation under the application of load. They are always they can absorb the high compressive strength towards that. Though you see we are not you know like going in depth of the material science, but these kind of information always is important to analyze the stresses and the strains if you apply the load. So, in this lecture now you see again uh, we are going to look that actually what exactly the factors which are affecting these properties and then what the properties are associated with that. So, now here it is you see first the condition affecting the mechanical property of a material. So, what are those conditions first? The mechanical properties depend on the test conditions like first is it has been established you know like the lowering the temperature or increasing the rate of deformation considerably increase with the resistance towards the plastic deformation. Always you see you see either if you lower the temperature or if even if you apply more and more in uh, this rate of deformation always we are going towards the nonlinear relationship between the stress and strains and always it gives you a plastic deformation range perfectly. Thus at lower temperature or we can say higher rates of deformation the metals and the alloys whatever you see you know like either the ductile or brittle or whatever the alloys which you are using the composite or the fibers or the polymers I should say which are always ductile at the normal root temperature may fail within the brittle uh, fracture means you see here first of all if we are talking about any brittle or ductile material we have to be very careful that actually what exactly the melting temperatures are there whether you see you know like if it is uh, if, if we are if you are using a mild steel and if you are using in you know like uh, some sort of uh, the lower lowering temperature reason then you see we cannot uh, exhibit all those uh, ductile properties which we are generally measuring you see here in the previous diagram of uh, stress strain curve of mild steel. So, which is a very essential component here that whether you see you are, your rate of deformation is very rapid or your impact loading is there or you see you know like uh, the kind of deformation is not exactly similar as we studied you see because the prime condition which we applied in the previous figure that was the static load was there and under the static load you see by hydraulic or any mechanical part always we can clearly visualize the point O, A, B, C, D, E all up to the fracture. So, this was the basic condition. So, it is you know like the dominant part is there that 
what is the basic condition which we can which which can affect the mechanical property of a material and these are the two things one is the lowering the temperature that what exactly the temperature reasons are there because once you go below the melting temperature or some less temperature the uh, lower lowering temperatures are there then the microstructures are not perfectly well stabilized in the material and it cannot exhibit all the property which we are looking for and the second was the increasing rate of deformation because you see it will considerably increase the resistance to the plastic reasons and you see all because the plastic reason is the uh, permanent sort of deformation is there and it is always you see some sort of you know like the distortion the permanent distortions are there more and more stress concentrations are there so you see it is uh, highly you know like we can say that the nonlinear part of the analysis is there which is not uh, easily predictable second you see no change up to the fracture part okay the sharp uh, whatever the sharp uh, changes are there in the cross section have a great effect on the mechanical property of a material because you see the a notch whatever the notch is there will always cause a non uniform distribution of the stresses because wherever the notches are there always as i told you that the stress concentrations are there the stress concentration means the more and more resistive forces are there uh, uh, within a effective area so means you see you know like when the stress distribution is not uniform how we can say that yeah this is uh, you know like the elastic reason this is the uh, plastic reason because already there is a stress concentration is there within the object that means there is no you know uniform distribution is there the stress and they will always contribute the lowering the ductility of a material because you see we uh, if you release the load you see whatever the percentage elongation is there or if you release the load if body is not coming exactly as it comes in the normal way then we cannot say that this is the perfect ductile material or the whatever the percentage elongations are there they are really uniform all across the body a notch reduces the ultimate tensile strength also you see because uh, if the notch is there always if any tearing is there in a material and if you apply the load we, we know that the failure will be there right from this notch only so always it lowering the tensile strength also of the material that means the maximum strength against the load okay of the high strength material because of the non uniform distribution of the stress or due to the stress concentration always whenever the stress concentrations are there within the material they will lowering the uh, ultimate you know like uh, the tensile strength of a material or we can see the real strength of material then whatever the load application is there there is a fairly well chance to fail right from you know like the notch itself so this notch is a very very important so that's what you see when we are doing the you know like the material processing whatever the the heat treatments of the metals are we always uh, see that there shouldn't be any you know like uh, the kind of the crack or the notches should be there within this material because whenever the load application is there there is a good chance and that's what you see all those uh, surface finishing processes are there the honing lapping and all those processes are there and uh, just uh, we apply or the micro machinings are there we just apply to remove all those kind of uh, these uh, notches or the cracks from the material to avoid this kind of failure and this is the second condition the third condition is uh, internal microstructure part that is the grain size grain, grain size straight away affects uh, the material property because if more and more uh, if larger grain sizes are there then whatever the cohesions are there in between that they are not perfectly as stabilized so that's what you see you know like uh, we are defining you see either we have a bcc microstructure ncp microstructure or fcc microstructures are there according to the if a material has a, if a material is having this kind of microstructure then what exactly kind of applications which you can apply and we can get the kind of deformation or the strength from the material so these were you see you know like uh, some of the factors three factors which straight away affect uh, uh, the material property respective of whether it's a ductile or it's a brittle material so if you are talking about the real properties or real characteristic of a material then we should check all those things prior to uh, apply any load application now come to the real mechanical properties first of all the hardness as i told you see you know like hardness is nothing but the resistance of a material to the penetration to the plastic deformation of another harder body like you see you know like we have an object and if we want to check the hardness of a material what we are doing here we just want to penetrate from his more ha harder body of the uh, this uh, uh, this specimen is so what we are doing here you know like uh, we are simply taking a object let us say if we have a, we just want to check the steel a mild steel car, the specimen and if we have a penetrator because we need a penetrator to penetrate that part so you see we are penetrating the object until you see it will not penetrate and whatever you see once it is penetrating whatever the reading will come it will give you the hardness so hardness is nothing but the resistance of a material against the penetration or against the plastic deformation and the penetrator should be more harder than this otherwise you see there should be a penetration in, even in the penetrator itself so we should we should avoid that situation and hardness test there are you see 
various hardness tests are there. There are various types of the scales are there to measure those things and some of the real scales which we are going to discuss later. So, first of all, hardness test consists in measuring the resistance of plastic deformation of the layers of metals near the surface of the specimen. That is, you see, there is a ball indentation test. Because you see, when you know, like it is always the penetrator is having a ball, circular ball, and it is always applying the load, compressive load, you see, against the, the permanent set of deformation. So, whatever the resistance will come from the body, it will give you the hardness of a body. So, as I told you see in that we always uh, we have a ball penetrator or ball indentation test is there. This method consisting in a pressing of hardness steel ball under a constant load P because again you see in that which is a very very essential condition as we applied in the previous case also that here there should not be you know like the load impact loading is there or jerks are coming it should be a hydraulic or mechanical you know like the loading is there and these loading is consistently or continuously increasing. It is not you see you know like Im I I immediately you see apply 10 Newton load and then again the 20 Newton load will come or 30 Newton load will come suddenly like that. So, here you see one has to be very careful while well, the load application is there the constant load is there and it is just you see you know like make more and more and more impressions are there into a specifically you know like uh, specially prepared flat surfaces on the test specimen and you know like uh, we can clearly see that you see here that is the ball indentation is there okay and we have a metal like that but after the penetration you see this kind of penetration can come so whatever the material which is you know like coming which is you see whatever the shape is coming and whatever the readings are there this reading will give you that actually how harder this material is so after removing the load because you see here we are applying the load up to the plastic deformation or up to the you know like the indentation the permanent indentation is there so once you remove the load definitely there is a shape is there of the ball uh, kind so here after the removing load and indentation remains on the surface of the test specimen and if the area of the spherical surface whatever you see this because now we know the diameter or whatever you see this nature that actually how much the load application is there and how these shape are taking place like that and if we know the area of the spherical surface on the indentation whatever it is if we can say that is the this uh, f square millimeter we can easily calculate the hardness and this method is known as the Brinell hardness method. So, you see there are Brinell uh, this hardness testing machines are there which are you know like even available in the many of the labs also. So, pretty easy you see put the indentator ball indentator on the you know like this the movable jaw and there is a fixed jaw just keep the specimen there itself a flat surface is there put the load through hydraulic one or the mechanical one apply the load and go up to the permanent penetration once you get that okay now the the scale is just stops there you would be having a you know like the reading and that reading is coming from the resistance will give you the hardness of that and that hardness is known as the Brinell hardness now, Brinell hardness and it is always showing by a number. So, you see Brinell hardness number is simply defined BHN we can say that is P by F. P is nothing but the load ap applied and F is the effective area square millimeter. So, here you see you know like uh, F can be ex expressed also you see because if we have you see the ball diameter D and you see the penetrator area the whatever the penetration is there D we can also express this F in terms of that and we can get the BHN accordingly. So, if I am saying that the ball diameter was there and the diameter of indentation was there then BHN is nothing but equals to uh, 2 times the load application divided by pi D into D minus square root of D square minus D square. That means you see if you know the ball diameter the penetrator diameter and if you know the what are the impressions are coming you can easily get that what exactly the Brinell hardness number is and whatever the number is coming this will give you a hardness of the material. So, this is one property. Hardness is always as I told you hardness is always coming under the plastic region. Okay. And then you see there is also the different machine is there that is known as the Weaker's hardness machine in which you see you know like we have a ball is of a conical shape not of the round shape we have a conical shape like that and then we can apply accordingly. So, here you see we can say that there are another variety of the hardness testing machines are there the penetrator shape is different because of you see if let us say if you want to if you want to test a real harder you know like the material then the penetrator should be more hard. So, generally you see in the in the weakers or in other testing machines you see we are always preferring you know like we always prefer to use 
the diamond point in that so that you see whatever the diamond is the hardest material amongst all the material which are available in the on the earth. So, what we are doing here if you are taking the diamond point then it can be penetrated of any harder material like you see if a tool steel is there or if a cutting tool is whatever the cutting tool steels uh, the steels are there which they are more harder than always we prefer to use the diamond to get the hardness of this kind of material. Now, you see we have the different strength which is known as the impact strength. Because previously you see prior to that what we were discussing about the static loading, uh, static load conditions are there, there should not be any impact or the jug should come. So, that you see the stresses, what are the stress formations are there, uh, st stress formations are there, they are altogether different from the static one. So, now you see the static tension test of uh, the un, you know like unnosed uh, specimens do not always reveal the real you know like this. Uh, susceptibility of a material to brittle nature and this important factor is always de determine the impact test because you see we just want to see that actually when you know like uh, the impact test is there we use the nosed specimen. And this specimen is placed on its supporter you see the nosed specimens are there and we simply put on the supporter to grip uh, like that on the anvil. So, that whatever you know like uh, the striker is there it can easily strike on that without any obstructions. So, uh, so that the, uh, the blow of the striker is opposite to the notch and you see whatever the impact is coming it will come exactly and it will simply gives you that actually how much energy or we can see the resistance energies are there for that. So, for that always you see we need to keep you know like uh, the spaceman in such a way that there should not be you know like a strike is there and it is generally isot charpy test is there generally you can find in our laboratories that actually you know always we are keeping the striker on the top of that and in this anvil you see we are keeping you know like uh, in the two grips of that the mater material whatever the material is there and we are simply releasing that uh, uh, this striker and you see it will go up to a certain height so that whatever the potential energy is there it is converting into the kinetic energy and with the full energy energy it strikes on that and you see it will go up to a certain height. So, we simply measure the height that actually after fracture how much height it will go and we will compute the energy accordingly and this energy will give you the impact energy or we can say it is known as one of the special property of a material and that this, this property is known as the toughness of that. So, impact strength is nothing but equals to A by F where this F is nothing but the cross sectional area is there of that specimen which is up going up at the fracture level and you see because it is you know like obviously there at the notch only. So, how much you see you know like the fracture uh, this area will come we can simply compute that. The impact strength is the complex characteristics uh, what are the complex, uh, complex characteristics is there because it is not exactly with the layers of the or the microstructure of those things. It is simply you know like the striker is coming and impacting those things and we are simply measuring the height with the area and we are calculating this A by A. A by F particular. So, it is a complex complex characteristic uh, which takes into account both toughness as well as the strength of material, but generally it gives you a toughness. So, that is the clear difference. If you want to measure the hardness always we are going for the static loading up to a penetration and this is the toughness you see in which we are simply giving the impacting up to the fracture. Okay. So, the main purpose of the nosed bar test is to just study the simultaneous effect of the stress concentration and the high velocity load application because you see if we have you know like the dynamic characteristic of a load and you see it is simply some sort of you know like the fatigue or some sort of uh, the impacting is coming then what will happen up to the fracture if we have a uh, well uh, this uh, the material is there with the stress concentration. So, this study is very very imp uh, useful to give this kind of information about the toughness as well as the, the strength of a material of this kind impact strength of these things. So, now you see you know like this uh, kind of information which we have discussed about the toughness and the hardness of material then we have the compression test. If you see you know like uh, under this uh, first of all the important thing is the shape of the specimen as we discussed in the previous tensile test also here also we, we would like to go for what kind of the sh shape of the machine to be used for the different materials as uh, those things. So, first of all we have for metals and the certain plastics if you are using a perfect metal or the plastics then the specimen may be in the form of a cylinder because you see if you are using the cylinder then it is pretty easy for us to keep those things in a proper way to apply the uh, this compression part and if you are using a building metal like concrete and other parts actually or stones particular then the shape of a specimen may be in form of cube. So, that you see generally you will find that the concrete materials or the stone materials are always in this cubic shape if, if you want to keep in a material. So, that whatever the load application are there in a realistic way it is pretty easy for us to apply those compressions on these 
cube shape of any stone or the concrete. So, you see here, if you are using metal or plastic kind of that, then you need to go for the, uh, you know, like the cylindrical, cylindrical part so that it can be easily compressed. And if you are using, you know, like the building material, then you need to go for the cube so that it can be easily compressed accordingly. So, now come to the realistic way. You see here, as we discussed, the shape of the stress strain diagram, you know, like for a ductile material, if you are using such as mild steel, then load versus, you know, like the, uh, uh, this load versus strain or the load versus deformation diagram will give as like you see here. See here like uh, that uh, one on, on, on x axis we have the plastic deformation that is the strain part is there on y axis we have you know uh, this uh, compressive load or the compressive stresses are there and if we, we see the first diagram then we have you know like a uniform structure of any brick or the cylindrical part is there and on top of that you see we can simply apply the compressive load. So prior to that you see you know the first thing will come as the, uh, this uh, linear relationship between the stress and strain or the load versus deformation we can say this is the elastic reason and can clearly define this thing but once you go in the plastic reason means there is a non-linear part is there whatever the slacks are there of these things, the outer surfaces are there, they are simply, you know, blowing out towards that outer region and we can get a deformed shape like that. So, this deformed shape will give, clearly gives you that plastic region, you know, like uh, that here we have the elastic region is the straight part and the nonlinear part is there, this one. So, as you move further, you will go up to the plastic region in that, which is quite different than, you know, like the ten, this, uh, the tensile test, but since it is a ductile material and the layers are well set up within those things, so it is blowing out towards the outer directions, but it clearly gives you that, you know, like uh, this plastic region is there, but it is a kind of uh, the nonlinear relationships are there in between that. So, the ductile material which, you know, like the steel, copper or aluminum, which has a strain strain diagram similar to ones which we have, you know, like in the tensile test, but there would be an elastic range, you know, like within that, it is simply following by the plastic region, not by exactly the nonlinear as we have seen the ductile one, but it has, you know, like the similar kind of trend. The ductile material, all those you see, they have the proportional limit in compression test. We are very similar to, you know, like those in tensile test because uh, the whatever the microstructures and the layers are exactly forming so that the within this uh, reason, elastic reason, those, you know, like the stress is exactly proportional to the, uh, to the this uh, the strains. So, even if we if we solve any kind of engineering problem, always uh, we see that irrespective of it is a tensile test or it is a compressive test, uh, whatever you see the uh, this moduluses are there, the Young's modulus, uh, the shear modulus or the bulk modulus or this poison ratio, they are well applicable to the tensile as well as the compression test within the elastic region. So, there will not be any difference in those things. So, while solving any numerical problems, we have to be or while doing any engineering designs, uh, there is no difference if you are, you know, like doing for compression as well as the tensile test, okay, when the load application is there within the elastic deformation. In the tensile test, you see a spasm is being stressed and the necking may occur. So, whenever you see, you know, like when the stretch is there and necking occurs, definitely the ultimate uh, fracture will be taking place because of the stress concentration. On the other hand, when a small specimen of a ductile material like this uh, mild steel or copper or any aluminum is compressed here, it begins to bulk on sides, you see as I shown in the previous diagram and it becomes a barrel, you know, like, uh, like up to the end part uh, before the failure and with the increasing of this, you know, like load, whatever the spaceman which is, you see, uh, coming as a barrel, you see, it is simply flattened down towards the outward directions and you see, you know, like it is offering increasing resistance towards the further sorting. So, as you further sorting uh, towards those things, whatever more and more resistances will come out from those things and you see, you know, like that is why going to this, uh, uh, the lobe side as in the uh, ductile, uh, this uh, tensile test, it is going towards the sharply increasing part because of more and more resistances are coming from the, uh, this, uh, this uh, ductile material against the compression load. So, now if you are talking about the brittle material now, which is you see more of uh, comfortable towards uh, the, uh, this compression side, they are always you see you know like having the initial linear religion, uh, the li uh, linear reason. Uh, followed by, you know, like the nonlinear uh, reason is there, which is, you know, like having the hard rate of deformation as we have seen in the, uh, uh, this uh, tensile test of brinal materials. Uh, so, if we see the diagram exactly of the same, we will find that uh, we have, you know, like uh, the compression stress strain diagram, the similar kind of shapes as it is there in the tensile test of diagram and you can see here the kind of fracture also this uh, the irregular shapes are always coming irrespective whether it is a tensile or the brittle, uh, the testing is there at the time of failure. But if we compare the 
strength of the you know like uh, this uh, brittle material in the tensile as well as the compression we would find that there is a kind of three or four uh, four times more than you know like the more strength is there in the compression test as compared to the tensile test so always it is preferable to use the brittle material while you see the compressive load is there and if it is always preferable to use the tensile material uh, this uh, this ductile material when the load application is tensile so that's why you see the as i told even in the my previous lectures also i told you that actually the foundations and all other you know like uh, this kind of machine foundation or these um, this uh, buses or cars or foundations they usually preferred you know like the cast iron or other or even in the railway tracks you will find that the concrete blocks are there for the compression kind of things while you see rcc rods and other kind of you know like uh, the, where the tensile loading is there the mild steel is always preferable so you know like uh, this kind of diagram will again strengthen this kind of concept so we have seen in this you know like uh, whenever the ductile material is under uh, tension or compression or brittle material is under tension or compression they, they are showing you know like the linear range as far as uh, the ductile uh, this elastic elastic range is concerned the linear relationship is there in between the stress and strain and if we if we are going for you know like uh, the higher uh, higher load conditions or we can say the kind of nonlinearity is there in that the relation between the stress strain then we would find that yeah there are some differences are there as far as the brittle or the ductile material is concerned in tensile as well as the compression test and if you go for you know like uh, the brittle material then again this diagram as we have discussed that there is a huge uh, difference is there in between the tension and the compression because they are brittle materials are always good in the com uh, compression. So now we would come to again back to this hardness testing where you see there are four commonly methods are there which can be employed in any of the industries like uh, first is the brittle uh, hardness testing machine, Weaker's hard hardness testing machine, Rockwell hardness testing machine and the shore uh, this uh, celeroscopy hardness testing machine. But uh, generally we are using as far as the labs are concerned or industry is concerned the main two the first to the Brunel as well as the Weaker's hardness testing machine. In the Brunel as we have discussed that indenter is you know like the hardest uh, the steel ball is there and which is you know like uh, we just put the impression on the uh, flat surface of uh, uh, the main our spaceman. So you know like uh, there are and we discussed that actually how we can calculate the Brunel hardness test uh, the number which will give you the hardness of a specific material it, it depends on you see you know like the applied load as well as uh, the diameter of the ball indenter as well as the uh, this uh, impression. But there are certain disadvantages in the Brunel uh, hardness testing machine uh, uh, hardness testing that one is the main uh, advantage of Brunel hardness test is the Brunel hardness number is uh, not independent of applied load. Thus you see you know like uh, as uh, the load is moving you know like the hardness is somewhat uh, variation is there meaning is pretty simple that actually we have to see very careful that actually what exactly the applied load is and what uh, corresponding hardness number is. So whenever you see there is a slight variation is there definitely there is a uh, kind of error is there in that kind of hardness number. Second the considering the geometry of uh, indentation for increasing load always we found that actually you know like uh, whatever the BHN is coming it is uh, somewhere you know like uh, it is depending on the small d. So again you see you know like we have to be very careful that actually uh, what uh, where this our dial whatever the dial gauge is there on the uh, hardness uh, this uh, testing machine uh, where it goes and is st stopping those things. So always you see actually there are always kind of uh, some uh, we can say the kind of clearance uh, effect is there or some what we can say you know like uh, the plus minus uh, this uh, uh, fits or whatever you see you know like uh, the scale errors are there which can be always introduced towards the uh, Brunel hardness testing machine. So this is kind of a disadvantage we can say. So as a ball is pressed into the surface under increasing load the geometry of always indentation changes as I told you and kind of always uh, which gives the clearance and always there is uh, there's kind of uh, error is there. As we have seen you see here in this diagram that whatever the kind of indentation is there, there is a different kind of you know like uh, the impression the circles are coming. So as you see for 1, 2, 3, 4, so always it gives you a different kind of readings or always you see uh, we have the same material similar kind of loading but the different hardness readings are there which will give you always a different uh, hardness. Uh, of a specific material. So here you see when we mean that the geometry of impression should not change with respect to the load. So always because it gives you a clear reading about the hardness and if it is changing by any you know like increasing the load that means there is some problem and this is the biggest adva advantage of the Brunel hardness testing machine. And we should just try to avoid this kind of situation to get the exact reading or accurate reading of a, a hardness for any specific material. 
So that is what you see sometimes we are going for the next machine that is the Weaker's hardness testing, testing machine. So Weaker, Weaker's hardness test follows a processor exactly identical with that of the Brinell test. So, means there is no SS the processor wise all the steps are pretty similar as we have adopted for the Brinell one in which you see first of all we need to see that actually whatever the loads are coming they are supposed to be static and the flat surface which is you know like uh, always at the static jaw it should be in the proper flat and there should be a proper contact from indenter to in, indenter to this uh, <coughs> whatever the space man is there. But the, you, you know like uh, we have a different uh, indenter is there because you see you know like what kind of material is there according to we, we have to use the indenter it is not just, just like you see you know like the spherical ball is there which we have used in a Brunel testing machine. The steel ball is you know like replaced by a diamond having a form of a square based uh, you know like uh, just a pyramid kind of that which has you know like uh, always in between uh, there are you know like uh, this kind of uh, angles are there and this is you see processed into you know like the flat surface of test piece using a specified force. So, you see always that how what exactly the hardness is there or how harder the material is there corresponding the loads are coming from the indenter and because it is a diamond point so it even it, it may it can you know like rupture the specified material. So, we have to be very careful that actually what exactly the material is there and how we can apply the load through the hydraulic uh, this uh, loading conditions. And the uh, this uh, diagonals of the resulting always uh, give the indentation of uh, you know like that how much uh, the impressions are there and using microscope we can easily find out that actually what the di uh, this uh, diagonals are there and how much uh, that impression is there and correspondingly you see the weaker's hardness number is there. So, if we go for the specific geometry then we would find that actually you know like it is kind of you know like uh, these uh, diagonals are coming on the impressions and we need to measure correspondingly. So, hardness expressed as a weaker's pyramid because it is a kind of pyramid is there. So, pyramid number is defined by the ratio of f by a where f is nothing but the force applied by the diamond or we can say the indenter and a is the surface area of the indentation. So, you see correspondingly we can easily find out that a is nothing but equals to L square by 2 divided by sine of you know like uh, this 136 degree divided by 2 because you see whatever the angle which is coming in between these two lines of a pyramid it is almost it is nothing but equals to 136 degree because in, in, intensely we are keeping this you know like angle in between these two so that actually whatever the impressions are coming there should not be any kind of you know like the errors are there in you know like the indentation. So, if you, you know, like equalize those things then you will find that it is nothing but equals to the hardness uh, you know like of the weaker's HV which is equals to F by L square divided by 0.854 or we can say if we are if we are comparing those things then we'd, we would be having 0.854 into F divided by L square where you know like we can find it out the L which is you see you know like nothing but the average length of diagonal it is equals to L1 plus L2 by 2 where L1 and L2 which we can see here you see you know like in the diagram that this is the kind of indentation. So, this is L1 and this is L2 and you see you know like uh, that uh, whatever the average length is coming it is nothing but equals to L1 plus L1 uh, L1 plus L2 by 2 and you see the impressions are coming from these you see you know like the diagonals of a diamond. So, you, these you see here you know like if, if you are gonna see the surface of uh, this uh, main spats man then you will find that actually these are the main indenters are coming corresponding to uh, different types of load. So, as you see if you increase the you know like the load condition then you will find that this kind of indenters one is this another one is this third one is this. So, this kind of shapes are coming in between that you see always we just try to maintain the angle of uh, 136 degree. So, that it will give a perfect reading and whatever the formula in with the previous uh, thing you saw you see h which is nothing but equals to you know like 0.854 into you know like the force whatever the applied force is there divided by the length uh, average length always it gives you a clear cut reading about the what the weaker number is there and once you have the weaker number you can have a hardness uh, number of that particular material. So, in the weaker test these you know like uh, the indenters of pyramid whatever in the or in the we can say the conical shape are used and uh, this or comes the disadvantage which is you know like uh, which we faced particular in the previous uh, Brinell testing machine that means you need as we will uh, increase the load the geometry of indenters does not change. That means you see we just try to maintain whatever the indent uh, the indentation shapes are coming just like in this particular figure we have seen that actually you know like these these shapes must be in the proper you know like fits are there because if you increase even the load there should not be any distortion is there even in the indenter shape because it is a diamond. So, we can expect this kind of situation here easily.
So, this is you see the weaker test and if you compare with the, the variation in between the hardness number of uh, you know like as you increase the load uh, with the weakers as well as the brinnel then you will find that there is a kind of you know like that is the biggest advantage of the brinnel that as you you know like increase the load applied load the kind of hardness is varying. So, if because here we are using you know like the toughest material of uh, we can the hardest material of uh, the material of this. Uh, uh, the indentation like diamond. So, probably we can expect that actually there should not be any change. So, as you increase the load there is no change in the weaker hardness question because of the diamond indenter, but here since we are using the ball as a indenter part. So, you see always a kind of nonlinear relation is there in between you know like the hardness number and with the increasing of the load. So, that is what you see we can expect this kind of phenomena with the Brinnell hardness number. Now, you see you know like some of the advantage of the weaker hardness though you see you know like the diamond point is very expensive to use, but you see as for the applications are concerned we have to go with the diamond point and we need to use you know like this kind of indenter uh, for a specific purpose. So, certain advantages are there like first of all apart from you know, the convenience of the weaker test certain you know like uh, these uh, comparisons are there. The first is harder material can be tested because of you see we have the diamond point is there which is the you know like hardest uh, material amongst all those uh, materials are available. So, we can and since we are using that one for the indentator uh, the indenter. So, probably we can go for any you know like uh, harder material to check it out the hardness. So, the harder material can be easily tested and indentation can be smaller and therefore, you see the less less abrasiveness or damaging is there in those material and we can easily you know like uh, uh, capture those uh, uh, impressions and we can compute those hardness for a harder material even. And up to you see you know like 300 kilogram uh, force per mm square you know like we can easily you know like rest those things on you know like some of the hardness number and uh, some of the loads can be easily apply of this kind of material also. But you see you know like about to the you know like uh, this one if you are uh, talking about the Brinnell number then if you are using this kind of material then it will not be possible for us to go because whatever the indenter are there the shape of the indenter is you know like the steel ball and even uh, if you apply this kind of load then probably you see the impressions can easily induced in that particular indenter and we will not get a perfect reading of the hardness. So, that is why you see this is the biggest, biggest advantage in the weaker number. So, you see here you know like uh, for those kind of material in which you know, you know like uh, the tougher the harder materials are there the weaker is the best one, but the uh, main disadvantage is it since you see it has a diamond point. So, it is bit expensive to use and we have to use very carefully just uh, to avoid the damage in the diamond point. The third one is the Rockwell hardness testing machine. In the Rockwell hardness test also you see it is a kind of indenter so always because if you want to measure the hardness we always use the indenter. So, indenter we are using the similar kind of thing when it is pressed into you know like the surface of the test piece, but the difference it, it is always differ from the Brinnell and Hardnell test in the measurement of hardness is based on the depth of penetration not on the surface area of indentation. So, this is actually how much depth is there. So, according to the depth you see straight away we can uh, you know like go and measure that uh, with the using of the formula that okay now this is the hardness uh, this much uh, depth is there then this is the hardness if the variation is there in the depth then this much hardness is there. So, you see here you know like uh, we are always trying to put the conical diamond okay here in the as a indenter which is you know like rounded as the apex part is there and it is bound to be you know like contact with the test piece and you see we are applying the force app. So, that corresponding you know like uh, the, the impressions are coming in the specimen. So, you see here this is a kind of specimens are there and this is you see you know like uh, the test part is there. So, as you apply the load since it is you see you know like the conical shape is there. So, we are getting you see here. So, you can see this the conical shape is there. So, whatever the impressions are coming we can get those the diameter and we can you see calculate corresponding hardness is there. So, some of the advantages are like that the Rockwell test are widely applied in the industry due to first of all the rapid and simplicity with the that actually they are simply performing high accuracy is there because it's, you know like what we are doing here we are simply going with the depth instead of the surface area. So, once you have the depth you see you can easily go and measure okay now this much depth is there this much depth is there and corresponding hardness is coming. So, instead of uh, you know, calculating those areas or truncation errors which we have done in previous cases or you see you know like the diamond which we are using which is expansive part and it is definitely see it is pretty risky to keep all these things. So, it is a very simplest thing that is why you see it is uniformly accepted that part. So, and th uh, that simplicity is also there just to measure the depth only and it has a high accuracy and due to the small size of impressions produced on the surface again it is acceptable universally. So, that is what you see this is the biggest advantage of the Rockwell test. 
Now, if you are going for you know like uh, if you leave this uh, hardness, then toughness is coming and toughness we have discussed that actually if the impact loading is there like that, then whatever the you know like the material is coming from the this neck or we can say whatever the cracks are there from the stress concentration, the energy is, energy gives you the toughness. So, it is defined as the ability of material to withstand the crack that is that means you see to prevent the transfer or propagation of cracks all across you know like in the uh, this. Um, cross section of the bar hence you see you know like it will cause the failure because you see the, it, it, the impact is coming and where the cracks are there it is simply because it is a weaker section of the section, uh, weaker section of the uniform bar. So, you see it will uh, apply the impact and it goes up to a certain height and we can simply measure that how much energy which it, it can absorb or we can say that actually what is the ability of the material to withstand the crack in the impact loading. So, uh, sometimes you see cracks are also propagated due, the, due to the stress concentration, uh, stress concentration and that is why we are generally you know like uh, visualizing that actually wherever the cracks or the spells are there on the surface always we assume that actually they have the high stress concentration. And this is one more you see you know like uh, the property of the material is there that is the creep. Creep is you know like is gradual increase of plastic strain in a material with the time at a constant load. So, you see it is gradually increasing especially in the uh, plastic zone where the nonlinear relations are there in between the stress and strain. So, what we need to do here whenever if you are talking about a plastic region and you see if you see that actually there is increase in the plastic strain due to the uh, load application then you see we are always going for the creep phenomena particularly at a elevated temperature because the temperature is also a, a plays a key role when there is a nonlinear relationship is there in between the load and uh, deformation. So, if you are talking about elevated temperatures some materials are susceptible to this phenomena and even under the constant load also actually always will find that due to the temperature increase there is a kind of strain you know like uh, the I should say the plastic strain is forming and uh, it will go up to the fracture. So, this form of you know like fracture is particularly relevant to the turbine blades where you see the temperature effect is uh, you know like uh, dominant and there are you see you know like the plastic strains are always coming in the material due to the temperature variations. So, that is what uh, generally you see the nuclear reactor are there where the high temperature regions are there even the furnaces are there or the the rocket motors are there. So, meaning is pretty simple that actually even if uh, the load is constant, but the sudden changes are there in the uh, this temperature the thermal stresses are always plays an, a key role and the creep phenomena is coming within that and it always you see you know like uh, starting from the plastic strain form of a material and always approaching towards the fracture of this material and that is what you see we have to be very careful that actually what exactly you know like this particular material is behaving under the temperature and how the thermal stresses are you know like uh, inducing within those temperature and how they will act when a uh, load is increasing or even at the constant load. So, the creep phenomena is always you know like coming with the kind of temperature and uh, you know like uh, with the plastic strain. So, if we are talking about those things then in the general form the strain versus time graph under you know like uh, we can say the creep phenomena it can be you know like shown in this figure. Here what we have we have the time which is a you know like uh, time versus the strain. So, as we move further then we will find that initially we have you see the nonlinear relationship because we are talking about uh, you know like the nonlinear relationship between the load versus deformation or we can say it is in the plastic region only and when you see we are not uh, applying the load. So, that is what you see we are talking about the constant stress uh, constant stress only, but as the temperature is increasing you see the low temperature or high temperature. So, you can simply you know like uh, see that we have the two main reasons the high temperature as well as the low re, uh, the low temperature reason and in that you see we have the you know like the different kinds of creeps. So, if you are talking about you know like the slight uh, variation in that you know like uh, this strain with the time we can say this is the primary creep and as we move further there is a slight variations are there just like there is a smooth variation I should say of the strain that means the deformation with the time as the temperature is uh, keep on increasing. So, you see here the secondary creep is there and the third creep uh, always lead to the fracture. And then you see you know like if you go for the high temperature then these you see the clear regions of primary, secondary or this uh, third tertiary creeps never you find actually. So, all three stresses of the creep which we cannot even you know like visualize if we are working on the high temperature and that is why you see you know like either we are talking about a new nuclear reactor or the turbine blades or any kind of furnaces these creep uh, due to the creep the fracture is always there and you know like it is starting from you know like the initial strain which you need like it is always there due to the application of load, but it uh, ends up to the fracture. So, you see here we have all those you know like the kind of uh, the phenomena are there, but the key feature is that even we are not increasing the load. So, stress formations are pretty similar, but the strains are there due to the temperature uh, whatever the you see the variations are there uh, all around. 
uh, that component and that is why you see you know like this uh, graph the strain versus graph uh, the strain versus time graph is also known as the, the creep curve or we can say you know like the standard creep uh, this uh, figure is there in between the strain and time. So, you see you know like this uh, whatever the def deformation is coming and to measure the deformation the strains are there versus time or we can say the creep curve. You see here there are two main you know like the conditions are there the one is the uh, initial strain which I, as I shown you here uh, due to the initial application of the load these initial strains are coming which is quite constant and we are always taking the you know like uh, this uh, this particular condition as the elastic strain. But the second uh, you know like uh, the stage is coming as a primary creep reason during which you see the creep rate or we can say whatever the slope is coming because of the nonlinear curvature always gives you know like the perfect uh, variation about the microstructure that how you know like the microstructures are being set up due to the temperature variation as you move further from first stage of creep to second stage and second stage to third stage even if the lower temperature is there and even if you are at the high temperature. Is. And then you see you know like there are some more things are there like if the second creep reason is there the creep rate is sensibility constant as you see actually there is a slight variation is there and if you are going for the territory creep region then you see during which the creep rate is accelerated and it will always uh, tends towards the fracture of the material. That means you know like uh, if even if the load conditions are constant we are not applying any load you see here and the surrounding you know like uh, the situation is pretty comfortable for an element. But temperature plays a key role thermal stresses are being developed and due to that actually always there is a fracture is there. Now we are talking about a particular problem numerical problem like you see here that if a lighter alloy specimen has a diameter of 16 mm a gauge length is of 80 mm when it is tested in a tensor now if we apply the tensor load and due to this particular if we have you know like the load extension uh, curve is there as we have seen you know like the, the stress uh, the strain versus stress like that actually and the similar kind of all five reasons are coming you see uh, the plastic and the elastic uh, uh, this you know like the uh, stages and in that you see all those five points are there in that if we are going up to a linear you know like uh, reason and the load application is 6 kN that means you see if you want to go for the elastic reason we have the load of 6 kN at which the point extension is 0.034 that means you see when you apply the load it was the extension was 0.034 mm. Now we need to find it out the limit of proportionality that because we are going up to elastic limit only and the modulus of elasticity because these two constants are simply defined for this reason only and you know like for that what we need to do we what we need particular we have you know like uh, the diameter. So, once you have the diameter once you have the cross sectional you know like the visa vision. So, you can find out the area once you have the area you have the load ok. So, we need to go up to the limit of proportionality and you know like we need to find out the modulus of elasticity. So, what you see you have these answers you can verify or you can solve this thing that uh, this is the area area you know like and the load is there. So, load divided by area will give you the stress you have you know like the strain because the deformation is given to us. So, it is pretty you know like easily measurable. So, once you have the stress once you have the strain you can find out the modulus of elasticity. So, E is nothing but equals to stress by strain put those value get the value of E which is nothing but equals to 70.5 giga Newton per meter square. So, you see here in this lecture what we discussed we discussed about you see that how these you know like the stress formations are there in those materials why these materials are responsible and what are the other properties which are associated with the material other than the stress and strain that we have seen that you know like the hardness is there and even to measure the hardness there are Brinell hardness tester machine uh, this uh, Rockwell hardness is there weaker hardness is there and then if you want to measure the toughness then you see you know like the Arjo Charpy impact testing machine is there. So, through which we can easily get those you know like the toughness of material then other another phenomena which we discussed about the creep that how creep is playing an important role you know like uh, where for uh, calculating the stress you know which are developing during the operation of either the turbine blade or the furnaces or any kind of you see the nuclear reactor where the high temperature regions are there and how these you see three parts of the creeps are coming in the phenomena when we are drawing the standard creep curve in between the strain and time. So, this kind of you know like the relations which we can easily set up in those limits. So, now you see as we move further now we will we are going to discuss about that actually if we have a tensile bar till now you see we discussed that actually if the load is coming you know like on the tensile bar then how they are reacting how we can calculate the stresses. But if you see the bar is subjected by two or one or you know like one two or three load means more than one load is there then how we can you know like calculate 
means in the same bar means earlier we have discussed about the three mutually perpendicular loads but here we are saying that actually the two different magnitudes of loads are acting on a bar and the same tensile part then how the stresses are you know like where the stresses are maximum where the minimum and how these are you know like uh, uh, formations of strains uh, the stresses and strains are there within the object that we are going to discuss in the next lecture thank you